Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to see how we can invoke HTTP request using HTTP with Azure AD connector directly from Power Apps with no usage of any flow or Power Automate. So that we are going to see. We are going to take two examples where uh, with first example where I'm going to query MS Graph API. I would like to extract the personal information related to tasks, my messages, my email and my profile as well. And in the second example, which we would be covering in the different video, and uh, that where I would be querying any SharePoint site, document library using HTTP with Azure AD connector directly from Power Apps. So let's get to the make.powerapps.com studio and I'll start creating one app. So I'll choose blank app and I'll directly create it. And I'll name that as let's say HTTP example one and I'll just create it. So alongside like till the time it gets created, we can again open powerapps.com so that we can start creating one connector which we are going to leverage into our power apps. So I'll directly go to these connections and because I have pinned directly you can see it otherwise you would find that in under more. So when you click on it you will see connections over there. So over here so right now start searching for HTTP if you have any existing connector then it's fine if you don't have it then click on new connection use this HTTP with Azure AD and it's a premium one so whenever you are going to use this Azure AD connector so your power app users should also have the premium license to access it so just remember that and over here we have to specify the base URL so for our base URL for our first example for Microsoft uh, Graph API where we are just going to use Graph Explorer first of all to make a normal query so I'll just open the Graph Explorer and we are going to start with a simple query of getting my profile this default one and we'll copy this and as I said because we are going to use this Graph Explorer so we are going to copy this graph.microsoft.com and we'll start building that connection with this base URL and this app this source URL both would be same for this case so you can paste it and you can create it so right now it's not allowing me because I already have one connection with the same base URL so I'll just go to this my existing connections and we'll show you what connection app or base URL I'm having so I'll just go, go into it added it so you can see I have this graph explore graph.microsoft.com and Azure AD resource URI is this so just remember for example for our example we are going to use the HTTP with Azure AD connector directly into power apps so with the delegated request permissions if we are not going to connect with any application permissions so whatever permissions are allowed or delegated or consented to the current user then those permissions we are going to work with so I'm just closing this now get back to our power apps and over here we'll simply start adding our this data we'll go to this data source option and we'll add and over here we'll just can expand the connectors or you can type in the connector name as your HTTP with Azure AD once you click on it you will find your connection there just select it so once this connection is added then you can go back to your screen and you can start writing the formula to invoke the HTTP request for that we are going to use on visible property there we can invoke this HTTP request with HTTP Azure AD with connector the function we are going to use invoke HTTP request method would be as part of first example we are going to just list down the user profile or the current user's name so I'll just use this get and I'll copy the invoke method or this endpoint from this so that we can just simply get this query so right now if I run this query from Explorer then you'll see like I have the property of this my user and I'll, I'm going to do the same from my this power apps I'm writing it so once it's invoked I am going to get the response into JSON so we have to 
get the properties read into some variable so that we can start showing it so i'll just say set variable name is profile and i'll just close this set variable so right now the response of this my invoke http request would directly go into the profile uh, object so now how to show it so i'll just insert one text table just to show the name of the person so i'll just extend it and we'll use directly the profile dot the value whatever property which we want to use so i'll just go to copy this display name go to my power apps and use this property directly as display name and i can just save it so there is nothing to show right now i, I have just saved it so it's saving and once it's saved i wish to publish it so that i can run the monitoring tool as well on it there you, you will see how this invoke http method is getting triggered and what response we are getting out of it so i'll just publish it and i'll just go back to my this apps and over here this app right click on it and i'll just launch this monitor and this will launch the monitor studio where we will see all the instances how my this app is behaving so i'll just say play published app and as soon as the app would run i would start getting the execution over here so this is the execution you can expand this debugging area if you wish to see if we look at this network so it's an invoke http command and if you open that in data you will see the request uri the invoke std method with this method name get and this is my endpoint so in response you will see in body i will get the response of this attributes and you can just simply bound these attributes as we have done so it's displaying the current user or my profile username so you can very well do this for other properties so right now it's a basic operation which we were able to execute executed successfully and we can just quickly change it so that we can use one more example of having my contact my emails recent emails so i'll just go to explorer again and we'll go to this left navigation we'll just say my mail and i'll run this query and in this query in the response i am getting my this mail all the mail with the subject body and the babblings so what i am going to show is i am going to use this subject i'll show the subject into one of the table in this example first of all i'll just copy this endpoint and we'll replace the endpoint into this http invoke http method and we we'll change it and right now so this method this uh, response of this uh, command would give me the json which would be having as a value as a main property the main attribute and this under that we'll be having sub attributes so this is a table object nothing more than that so what we are going to use so we are going to just parse just use this let's say message property and i'll just remove the label which we used and instead of that label we will add the data grid so that we can show the messages in a data grid so i'll just add data table preview and over here so what we are going to use in items i am going to say that table we are going to convert that object into table and the object name was message dot and this property which we are getting is as part of value property so i'm going to use this value and change this to value so now i got a one table out of it but in this table i have to bind the field so that the subjects can be displayed so i'm just binding that to value you can just click add and in this value if you extend your table from the left hand side you will see value column has been added and you can very well extract the other uh, properties out of it so for example i said i wish to extract the subject so i'll just copy this subject go back to my this item and we'll say subject and i'll just minimize it save it and i said like publish it if you directly wants to see the execution in the monitor so i am just running it from play publish version 
and over here we have this latest version so i'll just refresh it so that our latest version can be executed and i got this subjects of my latest email as part of this grid the data table as a first column the subject is showing over there so in this simple manner you can directly invoke the http request using the http with azure ad connector and in my subsequent video i would actually tell you how to invoke the sharepoint site list libraries values using the again the same connector because it's not just uh, limited to graph api it can be any of the rest api which is secured with the ad can be accessed via this connector very useful one but it's a premium connector just remember that so your users would need the premium license to run this power app so that's it for today's video just uh, stay tuned for my next video thank you